We have some cool questions. I wrote, I don't know why it printed so freaking small. So I'll see if I can read these. And my printer is running out of black ink, so it's like even harder. So we have one question from Emmanuel Hernandez. And all it says is, hey, do you, may, do you guys have any tips for flap ref reflection? So what are your tips, Jackie? My tip is small hole, big problem. That was, that's my favorite. One of my attendings said that and I've never forgot it. So I said I, something like that like you know, 15 years ago. To, to get tooth out, you make hole bigger or tooth smaller. Yes. <laughs> it's like, that's my I mean, tip. I, I, yeah. so for third molars, like if I think I can wiggle it out, I'll do like a very conservative flap, just envelope flap next to the tooth. I'll get my elevator on there. And if it's moving and I can get it out, great. Basically, I can, I like to rest my Minnesota kind on of the on the bone yeah. and that provides really good visualization. Also protection of your flap with the Minnesota yeah. there. Um, You're not touching the tissue all the time and, and get that post-op swelling and pain from that. I think what a lot of people don't understand is like, how do you, I get a lot of pain with my wisdom teeth, you know, extractions and so forth. I'm like, there's so many factors that could cause. There is, there really you is. Know, it's like moving the, the Minnesota touch, you know, pinching the tissue. Like there's so many bad things that you're, you could be doing that that's affecting all that. So yeah, those are all really, really solid things. Same thing. You know, I incision, once that Minnesota's on the bone, I try not to move it as much as possible. That way you're not always going back and forth and moving that tissue around and causing more pain. Um, but that's basically it. Like I don't do a lingual flap or anything like that. Very rarely I would have to do something like that unless there's pathology or something there. I mean, that's really the main reasons I would do it. There's another question here. Why is this so tiny? Hold on one second. This is so embarrassing. I'm gonna put these on. Uh, this is from Bespoke Face Cutter. Mr. Okay. Face Cutter, how you doing? Uh, please do some cases of CBCT reading and teach why you do coronectomy versus extract. So we kind of discussed some of these things, uh, you know, like why would you do a coronectomy versus take the tooth out? So two things. I think the majority of the, the answers to the question is, is that I, I would love, my goal is to always get the tooth out. Yeah. And as a surgeon who, when you get into your career, you've done these multiple times, it's a feel you know whether or not that tooth, you know whether or not you're going to be able to get the rest of that tooth that out tooth or if that thing is ankylosed down there, then I'm probably going to leave it in there because that's a safer option. So that's the one um, question. What was I going to say? Oh, the other piece of that is if I get a CBCT and it's so entrenched in the nerve, then I honestly, the decision that I'm making more is do I even do anything with this? Just leave it be versus... Yeah. Because if they're not symptomatic, are not sometimes you get rinse. referrals and it's a really crazy looking, deeply impacted tooth. And I'm like, is it symptomatic? There's no pocket there. Just leave it. I mean, yeah, honestly, it's like, it's like at that point, bony. like risk reward is, you know, not in your favor. You know, I know the referral says to get it out, but I don't see a, a valid reason, you know, to get it out. Basically for your consult with the patient, like you need to go over removal and or coronectomy at the consult and discuss both options with the patient. And I think they'll be more comfortable, you know, with either option than if, you know, if you end up not removing the tooth. And this is from Francisca. Why are you so freaking hot? I don't know. I, about, I had to add can't that answer that question. But no, here's another one. Dr. Rummies, what's your success rate in post-op complications for coronectomy? I mean, literature is high. Success rate's good. Root migration, maybe up to 30% in some cases I've read. But again, having to go back in and take out an exposed root or partially exposed root later is safer than having to remove it off the nerve, in my opinion. So that's not a big deal. The literature also states that actually a horizontal impaction is a contraindication to doing a coronectomy because sectioning right. of the crown can actually increase the risk of eye and injury. And in this specific case, both of them, one was horizontal, one was literally like 180 degrees upside down. Both of them had coronal pathology associated with it. So they really didn't have, have a to. choice. Yeah. We finally got her back in, took the panorax. I mean, the root was migrated. So we got her back in. I did put her back to sleep for that one. But that was like, whereas the first one was like probably an hour of everyone struggling. And this was maybe 15 minutes. The mm -hmm. thing, thing came out. And then after it came out, healed beautifully. And her numbness um, essentially resolved. No, I totally get it. They're not easy cases in general. That's why we're, we're talking about this procedure as an option to not take the tooth out you know, or partially take the tooth out. So that makes sense. This is from AdVision 2020. AdVision 2020. Um, 
What are your preferred burrs or instruments? Any special considerations during and after surgery? So I, I'll, I'll put that burr up that I use for cornectomies, basically the smoothing burr at the end, I'll put up on the screen. Other than that, just normal burrs, like whatever you use to section teeth, 703 or 1703 um, Fisher burr. And then sometimes when the roots break, I'll go to a 701 long burr. Um, it gives me a little bit more reach, I think, and it's a little thinner, I can control yeah. it better. Those are my only two burrs really that I go to. Um, yeah, for, for I, I teeth out. pretty much use a Fisher burr 702 or 703. Have to have the long one because a lot of these are actually vertically, you know, they're impacted. deeper. Yeah, and you're just they're deeper. So goal is to, the goal is to remove all the enamel. So you're, you're trying not to leave any enamel behind because technically they say the enamel is reactive to tissue more so. And so if you get all that out, your your likely success for cornectomies is better. I don't know. So that's why. Yes. yes. And sometimes if you get a post a panorex and you see some enamel in there, then do you go back in there? Yes or no? I mean, for I me, mean, you're it's drilling like, well, so much like to get all that debris out and just like look at it clinically. It's not going to be 100 percent accurate. Like it's impossible. There's bleeding in there. Like you can't see everything in all spaces down there. It's impossible. So yeah, you do your best to irrigate and get everything out of there. But I can't see around corners. I can't, you know, do all that stuff. So that's that's not going to always work out. Dr. Gallagher, do you know him? He sent some questions. <laughs> we both know him. Yeah. I'm going to get him a little bit of airtime. It says, who can take out wisdom teeth faster, Jackie or Surf? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a speed guy. I'm just like efficient and just, I have my own workflow basically. So I just... Whatever time it takes, it, it takes. Um, I mean, it's not slow, but it's not. You no, know, no. There's people faster than me, but I'm not going for world records or anything. I'm just going for whatever works, you know, that, that I can keep my flow. What about you? I mean, I, I'm a pretty, like, type I like efficient. to be on time. To, I'm, I mean, I'm going to tell you that. I yeah, hate I'm being I'm a typing efficient person, so, I like, do not I, like being running behind at all. I don't like, like running behind me. either. Yeah. It, like, it cramps, cramps my style every single day. I have yeah. my, an own internal... Like, I don't really compete with anybody other than myself. I compete with myself, like, every single day. And if I'm struggling with a tooth more than 10 minutes, like, I am pissed at myself. Yeah, like, me too. What and is I'm like, oh, when's the next post-op coming in? They're, oh, they're already checked in. I'm like, oh, man. And then you're like, all right, let's get quit messing around. Let's like, you know, get, get it going. But that's, like, you know, every day almost. Like, it's like you're always trying to manage those things, you know. There's things that pop up. you got to patients here early there's a new patient post-op added in like there's so much stuff that happens during the work day it's crazy mr gallagher but to, you, to yeah, answer dr gallagher's question yeah. is, i think we're both i think it's we're high. both on the same level finish. i think high. we're probably better than him yeah probably just kidding mr. we gallagher. love him we really do where is he from jersey jersey shore oh east coast yeah so i'll skip that one question he asked but uh he asked another one <laughs> who would win one versus one basketball i i totally suck at basketball by the way i can't dribble Play pretty mean run at game the same of course yeah okay uh, you're probably better than me in basketball for sure um and you go to basketball games so you know oh we're, i'm going to one this evening so yes yes very I cool do. very cool calves baby they're um, the best this one's from our friend in australia i've never met him but actually he's supposed to do an episode with me this month the maxillofacial surgeon. Yes, I love him. Um, I've never met him. How do you? How do I grow up to be like you one day? Is what he said. Have you, if you've seen this guy's cases, and I'll put his Instagram or whatever up there. <laughs> He's way above my page. It is like clean head and neck dissections. It's so nice. Um, it's like you're watching a, like an anatomic review course, basically, like looking at his stuff. Like he's, it's great. Um, I'm like, I haven't done those cases, honestly, now since residency. So yeah, it's, that's great that he's, he's doing the work, honestly, Same. in Australia. This is from Sigma underscore 151. <laughs> tricks to avoid nerve damage when doing impaction that are close to the canal. Do you have any tricks? I mean, so one of the indications, especially if you can't see it, is if, if you know the neurovascular bundle, the veins and the artery, the, the blood vessels are above the nerve. So, so if you if all of a sudden get, get brisk bleeding down, down in the down canal... In the canal when I when see I that, see I know that I'm close to the nerve. Yeah. Obviously, if it's a case where there's a mobile route, you got to get that out. You can't leave a mobile route tip in there. If it is ankylosed or if I feel it's ankylosed or if I'm having trouble and it's not really moving, then I may make that decision to just yeah. leave that behind at that time. Yeah, for various reasons. Visibility, like, you know, a little bit of blood in that tiny little space is a lot to deal with. And if, if you can't really stop the flow and do surgery at the same time, it's it's not going to work. Um, I've even put bone wax in and taken it out two or three times, and it's still bleeding. And with the bone wax in, it's not. So I've 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 closed them up with bone wax, brought them back like three weeks later, removed everything easily. 
and with no bleeding. And so that's, a, that's an option. That's like a, you know, like one of the further down list of things to do, but that's, I've done that before. Um, and it's worked out fine. It's just, obviously you have to come back, but then your risk of bleeding is much lower. Everything's clotted off by then, you know, and things are loose generally, which is nice. And like I said, my trick was like, if I taking a tooth out and the root breaks really low, I'm using a 703 burr to section. I used to go to a 701 long burr and that gives me better control. And I don't go full speed a lot of times. So I'll like take my foot off the pedal a little bit more and then just kind of with, you know, you can use some magnification or some loops even. I've even done with loops in rare cases. I'll bring out the loops into it. You can take it out that way. And I use a curved hemostat to, to hopefully grab it. And then I, I actually had H and H company modify a straight hemostat with little, they put little claws at the very end, like one claw here, one claw here. And it's a really thin straight hemostat with a little claw at the end. And if I clamp that root tip with it, and oftentimes I can just pull it out. So that's nice. Yeah, you can modify instruments. So I'm like, I told him, can you make one with just a little claw at the end? He's like, sure. Okay. So that's in my special drawer. But yeah. Uh, so if you're, I've whatever, been performing no. these procedures since 2010. You know, my first case was with Nobel implants, and I continue to use them today. You know, you can see and feel the transformative difference this makes in a patient's, patient's life. Um, get a second, third opinion, you know, and then ask them, you know, what system they're using. And um, just do your due diligence. Um, so what's your stance on cornectomies? Heard mixed opinions. This is from Davishne48. I mean, we've kind of discussed a lot of that. You know, it's, it's, been like I think the last it's, a, valid, it's a valid procedure, honestly. It, there's, It's not as vague as it used to be my um, stance on anything if you know for those out there wanting to know and this is kind of like my mo i'm very passionate about documentation is with anything that you do especially cornectomies if you document it well you really you save yourself litigation you just if you document it well you have the literature behind it you say why you did, why it, you did it, it you, yeah. you really you can't really go wrong, can't go wrong. Yeah, you know, this you is know. a, you know, it's a, there's a dental code, insurance is covered. Like this is a known thing. This is a known treatment. So at this point, it's not a, it's not that big a deal. It's just case selection and making sure you're, you're doing it on the right patients and, you know, mobile routes, you know, things like that are trickier. Can cornectomy to be done for any angulated impaction or just vertical ones? This is from Saif Aslam Khan. Well, like we kind of discussed this, like technically you probably could do it for any of them. And the literature kind of talks about avoiding it for the horizontally impacted as we said not too I've long done ago. it on them too I mean you just I've done it in, on them in those cases like the crown is carious or something even from a deep pocket and you kind of you have to do something either you take the tooth out which is riskier than half the tooth out in my well opinion. right so and in my case yeah. like there was a coronal pathology on both of yeah. the teeth so you can't yeah. really you yeah. know so at that case you've got to do it either way um, and, but really when you think about it they're talking about horizontal impactions because there's greater risk of the sectioning of the crown to the IAN. Well, if you're taking the tooth out, you're doing that anyway. Exactly. You, you, you can't, you can't take I mean, it out you the section other way. it not all the way down and use your elevator just to split the rest. That in itself, I mean, but you're taking out teeth a lot of times that are sitting on a nerve anyways, in other cases, and they come out fine. So yeah, it's just one of those decisions clinically. It's, it's case by case, but, you know, I think it's valid to do it on even on horizontal ones. Agreed. Yeah, so... Let's see here. Fur pierogi. I don't know. Fur pierogo 26. Is root canal necessary on that root stump? <laughs> I think the literature is very clear on this, that root canals is not necessary. You just leave um, a vital tooth root there and it works somehow. I don't know. It's what it is. Um, well, when you think about it, though, we have, how many root tips do we leave? The patients walk around with it all the time. Like mm -hmm. they didn't. Or you I see patients with out. root tips. Oh, we lost the crown. Kicking in there for years, and there's like bone over them. You know, it, it's a thing, right? Obviously, some can get infected, but most do not. Erin Shenfield, do you know her, Doctor Shenfield? She wrote, "How do I get to be as cool as you guys?" So I don't know. I don't know, Erin. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we're thinking about a cool course in 2025, so yeah. stay tuned. Fall. All right, cool. All right, that, there you go, Erin. Not cool. Amelia from You Animal Lover, will the raccoon be on the show? No raccoon will not be on the show. I have a raccoon that I've been feeding in my backyard for a little while. He keeps coming around, so he's not on the show today. If Sorry. you saw, if you follow Dr. Wahan and you see what he's feeding, you can see why this thing keeps coming back. He's a city raccoon. He doesn't like fruit or meat or anything. He just likes the carbs. You could tell. We're almost done with these guys. Let's just see. Some of these we've already answered. What if the pain doesn't go away after cornectomy? 
And you kind of alluded to a case that you had that just took a long time. In some of these cases, even taking a tooth out, people heal a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily meaning, you know, it's just because a coronectomy was done. I've had extractions that people kept coming back, you know, it's like, oh, it's, yeah. you know, there's something going on. I mean, I, I mean, think, I think like we've said before in many things and answer to many things, it's a case by case basis. Yeah. Um, it depends on how long after like the duration after the procedure, if it's like within a month, I'm like, well, that's pretty normal. I'm not really going to do much. I'll be like, come on back in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. If it's like three or four months down the road, I'm probably going to get a Panorex just to see if anything's going on underneath there. Obviously, if it's not healing, I had one like this. I think the other one that I, no, I don't know if it was the other one that I gave you or not, but it was just, uh, I, th- I don't even think it was third molar. I think it was just a root tip, just kept not healing. The biggest thing is to monitor healing, clinical healing, and, you know, the presence or the condition of the tissue, because that really makes a difference. If it's healthy tissue, then you're pretty good. If the tissue is not healthy, then there's probably inflammation, inflammatory cells that can essentially get into the bone. Worst case scenario could cause osteomyelitis at some point. So, I mean, these are very rare cases, but it's something that you have to like at least have on your radar because it can happen. And also, obviously, the overall condition of the patient, existing medical conditions, all that's going to contribute. Just, you know, know, keep a closer eye on things like that. Yeah. So Terry Singh one asked, you know, what are your indications and contraindications for coronectomy? We've, we've gone over a lot of the indications. Basically it's a crazy looking tooth on the nerve, but we're not, we may leave some of that there as indication. Contraindications, you know, like we talked about maybe horizontal impactions, but again, I've done them on those for, you know, you have to, a lot of times you have to get the tooth out or take, you know, half the tooth out. Yeah. Yeah. The two contraindications that I read about in the literature, one, obviously, presence of infection or mobility. Those are right. the, the so, two Right. So, yeah, if the tooth, if you're elevating it and it's elevating, but you just can't get it out and you just cut half of it off and leave it there, that's not a good indication because you've got that root mobilized now enough where that could be, a, that's probably going to be a problem. So that's a big thing. Like, if the tooth is moving, I try to get it out. You know, that's the main goal is to get it out. But if it's solid and you, you're trying to get it out and it's just not budging and you're like, you know what, this is a coronectomy case. I think that's fine. Um, as long as you're meeting those criteria, you know, in your mind and, you know, risk, you're always going through like what's worse, you know, what's am I doing more damage by trying to keep trying to get this out and then deciding at the end I'm going to have to leave the, the bottom roots tips there anyways. You know, so like it's one of those things where because you have to remove more bone, you know, there's there's lots of lots to think about. Let's see here. Is it okay if you leave enamel inside? We talked about that. It's generally considered more reactive, so you try to get all that enamel out. But yes, but yes. if it's there, it's okay. Like Yeah. I mean, it's not the end of the world. What's plan B if your coronectomy gets infected? I mean, obviously, if it gets infected, you got to go back in and take it out. I mean, it's probably easier, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, if it's infected, it's generally easier because it's hopefully more mobile now and it'll push out, you know, easier, so... I think that's about it today, and I didn't even get to do roll the dough. But yeah, we got through a lot. I mean, this podcast might this one might have to be like three episodes long to to get it in. But I think those questions were all really good, and I really thank you guys for sending them. And thanks for taking the time to to come on. Jackie. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> like, I know we've had to reschedule this a lot. Oh, it's Christmas, it's New Year's, the holidays. Like, yeah, yeah well, it, it happens. Um, but but we're it's back the first, we're going into 2025 with a full, full you know, with a bang. bang. So that's great. that's great. Yeah, this will be a good one. And then if you guys watching have questions, just, just send them on over to either of us is fine. And uh, we'll hopefully try to get this out. We recorded it, was it 2025 now, right? So yeah, this show will be out within a week or so. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. you. All right. Bye, Jackie.